Oil on pace to record its fourth straight month of months of gains as well, but with Russia already relaxing its fuel ban announced just last Thursday, and with the Fed widely expected to keep rates higher for longer, will the positive momentum slow? Let's ask Jeff Curry, Goldman Sachs outgoing global head of commodities research. Jeff, first of all, it's great to see you. Welcome back. Great. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's my last time at, at the GS head of commodities research. It's so the I, end you of know, an, every time. an era. I mean, we, are we going to see you again in, in another four? Or are you, is this it? Are you you're going out to the ski slopes and you're, you're we're never going to see you again? Oh, uh, stay tuned. There, there, there'll be a follow following act, but I, I am going to try to enjoy those the, those ski slopes along the you know the next three to four months. So I, I can uh, imagine. But, but we'll be back. And uh, by the way, I was thinking about, do you know I was on this show in April 2020, the day we went negative? So if I look back, you know, the highlights of the last 27 and a half years was I had the privilege to be talking about prices when they went negative in April of 2020. Actually, it was on this show this time. You know, thank you for that. Thank you. you know, and it's been fun to kind of every that's why every time I see you, I think about all the extremes that have happened in such a short period of time as well. So we had negative 30 or whatever we did back then. We popped up to 130 last year. But I, I really thought the best articulation that I really heard of what was going on in the global economy the last several years was you talking about the purchasing power that had shifted from basically the wealthy to everybody else and the fact that we were just running out of molecules as a result. Yep. And by the way, those those types of pressures on the system, you know, they haven't gone away. So we'll we'll be talking about them for for the years to come. So. So if I were to say, OK, you know, the last time, you know, that our, our unfortunate viewers get to hear from you, they the, your parting thought was that we're in a super cycle that still has legs to it. Or is it is it just oil now because of under investment and under capacity and, and the energy transition? Or, you know, what's the next kind of five to 10 years set us up for? I mean, it's every commodity out there. You know, in fact, we still stand by the view that copper is the one best positioned over the next year because, you know, copper is the new oil. If you're going to electrify the world and given all the elements in the periodic table, the only thing that can conduct electricity sufficiently is copper. So strong demand story and it's like oil has got under investment on the supply side. Inventories are low. The only headwind right now is strong dollar in, in the property market in China. Um, but as we look out into next year and beyond, we still think it's going to go above $10,000 a ton. So we may remain quite positive on the entire complex and in copper is the best position. By the way, you know, oil is just as well positioned, but it just doesn't have as long a legs as. But there's uh, as a war on oil, right? No one's declaring war on copper. And and I, I, there's so many things I wanted to ask you about. But looking at what the UK government is doing, where in the hopes of maybe you know shoring up some electoral support, they're walking back some of their uh, major transition plans. While at the same time, California is pushing ahead. It wants scope one, two, and and kind of three disclosures down the road. So, you know. I guess I look at something like oil and say, yeah, I can see that the supply is going to be challenged. I look at something like copper and wonder if it's going to be a repeat of the famous Ehrlich uh, Simon <laughs> wager where, you know, with yeah. commodities, it seems that no matter how much you say they're going to, there's going to be a shortage, supply always somehow, somehow kind of comes up to solve that. But the difference with copper is it takes decades to bring on supply. Uh, unlike oil with shale patch, you can bring it on in six months. Um, but you need capital. And one of the key points we like to say across all these commodities, it's the restriction on capital that creates the problems, not so much the commodity itself. But copper's got a double whammy. Not only is it not getting capital, it takes a really long time to actually produce. That um, but, but the bottom line, near term, I agree with you, oil's the one with the most upside.